iSCSI is a network storage protocol that has many of the benefits of Fiber Channel, but also takes advantage of the simplicity and low cost of standard IP networking gear. There are some standard use cases for iSCSI. It is ideal for backup to disk, adding storage to servers without having to add physical drives, and also virtualized environments. The Store Center family of NAS servers offers iSCSI in addition to typical NAS protocols, but it may not be entirely clear when and why to make use of iSCSI. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes describing iSCSI and then demonstrate how easy it is to use iSCSI in the iX4. iSCSI is a SAN or block storage protocol, which means that shared storage on iSCSI looks to the host computer like one of its own internal drives, rather than a folder. The host can own that virtual drive exclusively and read and write to the disk as if it were its own internal storage. This capability is particularly beneficial in backup environments where large blocks of sequential writes take place and the end user can take advantage of the higher performance iSCSI connection. Higher performance means being able to meet the backup window and faster restore times. Let's look at this example on the whiteboard where the user is interested in employing a NAS as a backup to disk target. In this case, the user could isolate the iSCSI drive on a separate network in order to take full advantage of the higher performance offered by iSCSI. This is achieved by keeping the backup data stream off the LAN. Data flows from the client computers being backed up through the backup server and onto the dedicated iSCSI network, which uses the second gigabit Ethernet port on the iX4. In the event that the backup server doesn't have a dedicated NIC for its backup network, you could simply add the gigabit Ethernet NIC at a very affordable cost. As shown here, the Store Center iX4 200D has the capability to simultaneously present iSCSI drives and network shares, so you can easily employ the iX4 in both a shared storage and optimized backup to disk environment. In order to use iSCSI, a minimal amount of setup is required on both the iX4 and the host. And to use it as shown on the whiteboard example, we'll need to know either the IP address of the second NIC, which you can see on the LCD display, or the name of the device, which in this case is Shamu. The first step in setting up an iSCSI SAN on the iX4 is to enable iSCSI services. Go to the Settings tab on the UI and click on iSCSI. Check the Enable iSCSI box. If you leave the Enable Discovery with ISNS selected and you have an ISNS server, it will make the configuration of the host a very small bit easier. Next, create an iSCSI drive. This is as easy as creating a network share, except that you select iSCSI drive as the shared storage type. You need to set a fixed disk capacity. In this example, I'll set the disk capacity to only 10 gigabytes so that it will format faster in a later step. Note the IQN name. This is how the host will identify the disk you've created. Now to the host side. If you're using a Windows Server environment, you already have the Microsoft iSCSI initiator installed. But with systems like my XP laptop here, you would need to download the iSCSI initiator and install it. It's easy to find on the Microsoft site, and it's a no-charge download. I've already downloaded and installed the initiator, so now I will launch it and begin configuring my host. Step one on the host is to discover available drives. This is where you need the IP address or name of the iX4. Type it in and click OK. Then, go to the Targets tab. iSCSI uses the term initiator and targets to define the host and the drive location, respectively. So I'm using my host iSCSI initiator to find the disk target we created earlier. And here you'll see the IQN name that showed up when we set up the test iSCSI drive on our Store Center iX4 200D. You need to log in in order to be able to use the drive. Check both boxes here to create a persistent path, meaning one that is maintained when you reboot and to enable multipathing, which we won't demonstrate today but can be beneficial in some cases and doesn't have adverse effects if you select the checkbox and don't have multipathing implemented. We're done with the iSCSI initiator, and our last step before we can use the new drive is to go into disk management and to format it and map it. You can see that the initialize and disk conversion wizard pops up, and you can see that the new disk shows up as raw storage in the disk manager. At this point, you treat it just as you would a new unformatted physical disk that you've installed in the computer. Click through the wizard, then click on the drive to create the new volume from it. The new volume wizard pops up, and again, we click through, except that I will do a quick format to make this go faster. Reaching the end of the wizard, we have a new drive that looks and behaves exactly like it's installed directly in the host, but it is actually a disk drive carved out of the RAID set 
on our Store Center iX4 200D. You're now ready to run backup jobs to this iSCSI drive or use it for whatever purpose you would like. For more information on iSCSI in backup or virtualized environments, please visit www.iomega.com nas to download a free white paper. That's all there is to it. iOmega Store Center devices make it easier than ever to share files, backup data, and ensure that your business stays up and running.